Good morning. Good morning. Kind of an odd day. In the middle of finishing up Advent here this morning, and then this evening we will have our services for Christmas. So on a morning like today, it's a very good morning to, to reflect and to place ourselves in um, the mind of the people that we hear in our Gospels. So let us begin our prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And and Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Purify our conscience, Almighty God, with your daily visitation, that your Son, Jesus Christ, at his coming, may find in us a mansion prepared for himself, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. When the king was settled in his house and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, you are the one to build me a house to live in. I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel whom I commanded to shepherd my people of Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now, therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep to be prince over my people Israel, and I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before, before you, and I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth, and I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will claim them, so that they may live in their own place, and be disturbed no more, and evildoers shall afflict them no more as formerly from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel, and I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read Canticle 15. Let us read it together as a congregation. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked in favor of his lovely servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. 
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name is Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord will go, excuse me, the Lord will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom, and of his kingdom there will be no end. The Mary, then Mary said to the angel, How can this be since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has conceived a son, and she is in her sixth month. For her who was thought to be um, <clears throat> for her who was thought to be barren, for nothing is impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord, let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As I indicated in the beginning, it's probably a really good time, considering the season and all that goes on, is to kind of take a very needed pause, a little bit of quiet time, a little bit of reflective time, and, and just think about what it is that we're celebrating. Mary in the Bible presents a very interesting image and was an incredibly interesting person. But I think really one of the biggest disfavors that we do to Mary and to that whole reality of who and what she was and what she did was to think of her in some kind of very superhuman kind of way um, that she was unlike the rest of us because in many ways she was not she was just like us so if we were to reflect what mary did in the bible and maybe 
how we might react or how people might react today to the same kind of event. Well, first of all, think about it. You're kind of in your room or wherever she was at the time, and she has this experience of the angel. And the angel says this incredible thing to her. And Mary winds up saying, let it be done to me according to your will. What might somebody today say? Can I think about this and get back to you? I have a few suggestions on how we can do this differently. This isn't the way we do things in Nazareth of Galilee. You know, Joseph and I had other plans, and I don't think we can do both. I don't think I can do this. What will everyone else think? Those are some of the things that we commonly hear maybe ourselves saying or we experience in church today and in our faith life. Well, when Mary was visited, the words, nothing is impossible with God, were mentioned. And that she had found favor. How often do we realize and understand the meaning of the fact that nothing is impossible for God? And therefore, because God loves us, nothing is impossible for us either. Well, Mary was favored, and we're not. We were favored by God's Son, who came and lived among us and died and saved us, saved us from our sins. The Lord is with you, is what the angel says to her. Is the Lord any less with us? He's speaking about her son. Her son will be great. He will reign. What child in our midst do we not want to be great? What child do we not want to, not in a kingly way, but reign? Have a wonderful life, a life of, of just great measure. When we baptize children, we baptize them as priest, prophet, and king. Talk about that in Christ the King. The fact is, is that's what we are meant for also. And so to take this gospel and, and make it and kind of sanitize it and set it on the side where it really looks, it's a great painting, it's a wonderful sculpture, it's a nice image, and that's all true, but it's not so antiseptic because her life wasn't that way. Her life was not perfect. If you think about it, you know, she was the God-bearer. That's the big theological term they give to her, the God-bearer. And it's, it's, it's truth. But she was a servant of the Lord. And yet she was a poor person from an insignificant part of the world at the time. Yet God saw the beauty and wonder in her life and that she could be such a wonderful part of his plan. No different from us. But she also speaks about being servant. How comfortable were we with that term for ourselves? Well, nobody's servant. No? In life, I hope not. But in our faith life, that's what we're called to be. And it's not a bad thing. It's not like what we imagine when we think of slavery in a human sense. It's not slavery at all. It is a servant. And what the service is based on is it's a service of love. And so we all should aspire to be comfortable with that role. Another way maybe of putting this, and if, if you just listen to, and this is, these are not my words, but they're very interesting, a great reflection. When she says, let it be done to me according to your will, maybe a better or another way of looking at that might be, let me become what you have called me to be. Live into her life. Live into the way God created her. And that God has that call and that plan for all of us. Let me become what you have called me to be. Not what I want to create for myself in my limitedness and sometimes arrogance, but what God sees and sees so well beyond what we are capable of seeing. Mary was ready for this visitation long before it happened. And you could say, well, how? She didn't know it was coming. No, she did not. 
But in her life before this, she was a person of faith in God and a selfless person. So when this all happens, it just flows because that's who she was as a person, who she chose to be as a person who was a believer in God. And so when the opportunity comes, and when it does come for us, and it does come for us, I mean, I have a vision of an angel, per se, but if you remember the gospel that we had before we started Advent, what you have done for the least of my sisters and brothers, you have done for me. And so the visitation by an angel happens all the time when we encounter our sisters, encounter our sisters and brothers who are in need. So when the opportunity comes, we can't be playing games. We can't be sitting back and saying, well, I have an opinion on this, I have this and that, well, I'm a little bit busy here. That's for all those things. Can I get back to you on this? Maybe we can do this a little differently. Now, that's not the way we do things here. You know, we have other plans. I don't think I can do this. What will everyone else think? When God comes to us through our sisters and brothers, we have to act as Mary did in faith, because that's been our life all along, and know that if God is asking, God will provide. And we need to meet the acute needs of our sisters and brothers. Mary was never meant to be a one-off, to be unique in the history of humanity and faith. Certainly there is the uniqueness in the fact that no one else will literally bear the Son of God as she did, but we are all God-bearers by virtue of the fact that we're made in God's image and likeness, and we are the body of Christ. That can't be diminished, and nor should it be. Mary was the example. We, too, have to understand that we are God-bearers. And that is the way God created us to be. A great thing. A wonderful thing. Not just a nameless, unimportant mass of people that come and give homage and, you know, fear the, the, the faithful God who's going to, you know, my favorite words in religion, smiting and smoting. It's not what we have. We have... God who loves us, who created us to be a family, with whom we are brothers and sisters of all. And not only that, we don't just talk about God, we bear God. We carry that. Mary did not earn salvation, but through her salvation came into the world, did it not? It's the same with us. Those of us who have known the forgiveness and tenderness and compassion of God need then to share it with those, not in an ostentatious way, not in a judgmental way, but in a giving way, with all we meet by acting in compassion, in mercy, in forgiveness and understanding. And once we have all this in our minds, and we've reflected on this sufficiently, what we will do here tonight, and what will be represented over there in the crash, will make complete sense. May God be blessed. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> I invite you at this time, if you wish, please stand and let us profess our faith. We believe. <laughs> We will come again in the Lord Christ, the house living in the heaven, and we see him in the land of the living. We may be the Holy Spirit, the Lord giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, where the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified. 
and he has slowly committed to us. We believe in the hunting, we have a different style of church. We acknowledge one of our business, which begins to sense. We are able to make a decision to do that. By faith of Joseph and Mary, trusted in God's promise of the Messiah, may the church proclaim God's gift of a Messiah to all the world and may it strive to follow the path of unity among all divisions of Christianity. God of love, help the world to receive the teachings of the Messiah by working towards cooperation and goodness. May its leaders end despair by eradicating fear, revenge, and ill will. God of love, defend our nation's liberties and give our leaders wisdom to establish justice and peace. God of love, here, inspire us to remember the poor condition the Messiah was born into by providing food, clothing, and shelter for the disadvantaged. God of love, here, we pray for women in childbirth that they will bring forth healthy children. May expecting parents nurture their offspring with knowledge of the child born in Bethlehem. God of love, here, protect children from abuse and encourage their caretakers to practice compassion for these children. May communities rise from complacency and end cruelty. God of love, yeah, heal your people from sickness and disease, grant peace to the dying. God of peace, yeah. I also come into your prayers, <clears throat> excuse me, we have a number of people in our parish who have had or have uh, COVID, or are ill in some way, I commend them to your prayers. We remember Judy. We remember Joan. We also remember Joan. God of love. We remember our prayers. Lord, keep us in your love, preserve our community, and do not let us become separated from one another. We ask this through Christ our Lord. <clears throat> Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most of us. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us. And we give you one time of your will. And you are your ways to the glory of the Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Yes. <laughs> Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High.
All things come of thee, O Lord. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord and our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn, to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation. In the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After, excuse me, after supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we 
And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation the spread and the wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Lord, thank you. 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 Christ, our Passover is sacrifice for us. Time of year is a great time of year to remember and to think about the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. And ask that you join with me in praying our prayer of St. Alphonsus, which unites us to our sisters and brothers who join us virtually are not able to receive communion under a physical form, but are nonetheless precious and part of the body of Christ as we all are. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I decide to receive you into myself. Since I cannot be slow to receive you sacramentally, how to use the Spirit to my heart. I embrace you as if you are all created in heaven, and you grant yourself all to you, never permitting to be separated from you.
Let us pray our post communion prayer. Eternal God, and every Father, and every gracious day, accept us as living members of the Son, Savior Jesus Christ, and give us that death, spirit, and food, and the sacraments of God. Send us now into the world of peace, and grant us strength, courage, and love, and serve you, and let us in the name of the Lord, through Christ on the Lord. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Uh, just to uh, make sure we're all on the same page tonight, we'll have two Christmas Eve services, one at three o'clock, which is very much children oriented, although children are welcome at all of the services. Um, we'll have a little bit of a procession with the children in the, the manger scene, and we will also, after the service, have a visit from Santa Claus for the children, and the older children. <laughs> At 5 p.m., we will have our uh, service, and that is, um, we'll have some more music with that, and also we'll have the candles at the end of the service for uh, one of our hymns, which we usually do. Tomorrow, because it's too many days here. Tomorrow for Christmas Day, we'll have a Christmas Day service at 8 a.m. 8 a.m. Next Sunday, see how I'm trying to keep all this straight. Next Sunday, the 31st, we'll have one service at 9.30. I'd like to thank all those people who came together, who cleaned everything up as far as the church and the, the, the whole building and everything and set up the decorations and work uh, so hard to, to make everything as nice as it is. So uh, much thanks to them for their time and their, their dedication. So thank you very much. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thank you. Mm-hmm. 